Boston Celtics guard Jalen Brown is now out for the rest of the season after a wrist injury he suffered a few nights ago. We're going to look at that a little deeper, see exactly what happened to his wrist, how he sustained that injury, as well as what ligament was injured and about how long it will be before he is able to play again. Hey guys, welcome to The Upper Hand. Um, today, just excited to take you through this injury, kind of look at in depth what happened uh, during the fall, what happened as far as the anatomy goes, and how he's gonna be able to rehab from that moving forward. So let's go ahead and take a look at the injury itself. As if you can look here, he gets bumped, falls right on that wrist. This injury a lot of time is suffered um, when guys or when someone falls directly on that wrist on an outstretched hand. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our diagram here, our skeleton model. Um, we're gonna zoom in a little bit on that wrist. As you can see right now, we're looking at the palm side of that wrist. Let me flip that around. Look at the back side of your wrist here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take away some of this, um, some of this retinaculum and um, bigger ligaments so that we can see the scapulonate ligament. Okay, so what we're looking at now, zoom in a little bit more, this bone that's kind of lit up that um, teal color is the scaphoid bone in your wrist. And then this one now that's lit up is the lunate bone. And of course, in the middle of those two bones, you've got the scapulonate ligament very, very important ligament. Uh, let me see if I can get, yes. Yeah. So we'll take this out and look, there's a pretty big gap there, um, you can see. Um, so definitely would cause some instability in that wrist, very painful injury. Um, and you can actually see this on an x-ray as well. If you x-ray um, a normal wrist, that gap is gonna be very, very small. If you x-ray someone's wrist that has had a scapulonate ligament injury or tear, that gap is gonna widen and you'll be able to tell that on an x-ray. So let's take a look at our diagram here and I'll kind of show you um, what that looks like. So there's your scapegoat there, uh, or excuse me, there's your scapegoat there, there's your lunate, your scapolunate ligament, again, that comes from that fall, that foosh falling out stretch hand, your scapolunate ligament obviously splits in two. So what they do surgically, you see that incision's made right there on the dorsal wrist, right over where the scapolunate ligament would be. And once you get down all the way to that uh, ligament tear, they're going to obviously put those two bones back together. And then what they usually do is take a few pins and drive them in from the side of your wrist here. And once those pins are in, they're gonna stay there sometimes as little as six to eight weeks, sometimes up to three months. So it just kind of depends on how bad the tear was and what the goals are there uh, as far as stability goes. So, you know, you hate to see that. The guys had a career high year, almost 25 points a game, um, shooting it really good. Obviously he's gonna miss the rest of the season with this surgery. It's a pretty big surgery. You have eight carpal bones in the wrist. You have 27 or so ligaments connecting all of those bones together. The scapulonate ligament is arguably one of the most important, one of the biggest um, ligaments in the wrist. So obviously that was a pretty big blow there. Um, Celtics have kind of had a bad year dealing with all the COVID-19 stuff at the beginning of the year. So uh, they've had a pretty bad, pretty rough time this year. Uh, I know they're slated right now in that seven or eight seed spot. So they're probably gonna be in that play-in um, tournament. You know, without, without an all-star guard like Jalen Brown, it's going to be hard for them to uh, make a good run deep in the playoffs. So we'll just kind of see how that goes. As far as, um, as, as Jalen goes and the timetable, um, you know, our, our protocol that we typically use, you know, has guys um, moving and using and strengthening their wrist, um, you know, really well up into that 12-week mark, so around three months. But as far as returning to a high level of play, like an NBA basketball player would have to do, sometimes you're gonna look into closer to that five month range, um, just depending on how he's doing with his pain and his uh, 
range of motion and strength and things like that. I would expect him to be back for the start of the NBA season next year. Uh, I don't I don't foresee any reason why he wouldn't be able to start the year uh, with the team. So hope for the best for him. Um, hate that had to happen to him, but uh, guys, if you if you like this video, uh, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button, subscribe to that channel, hit that notification bell. If you see some guys or some athletes um, getting injured and you want us to do a video on that just to learn more about it, please let us know in the comments. We will be glad to do that for you. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. We hope you learned something today and that this was helpful to you in some way. So you know our goal for this channel, The Upper Hand, is to give you guys the upper hand as you seek to better understand conditions of the upper extremity and just all topics related to occupational therapy in general. So please take a second out of your day, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can be sure that you're going to see all of our upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.